So welcome to part four of this web design series. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the amazing language of JavaScript. We'll look at how to put even more cool effects on your website, including things like games, uh, on-click events, and we'll look at something which is really, really important, which is version control. Now, in front-end design, we looked at HTML and we looked at CSS in the previous lessons, and they dealt with the layout and the styles. But we know that the web is not static, it's interactive and it's functional. You click on a button and something happens. Now, for that, you need a proper language to enable this. And that language, the language of the web, is JavaScript. We can make buttons work, we can actually do things, we can make games. And as mentioned, JavaScript is a proper language. So a couple of interesting facts, you could pause the screen to read that it was created by Brendan Eich in 10 days. It's a proper, full-blown programming language, and you can do many, many things with it. I would recommend our JavaScript series or that you watch some additional JavaScript tutorials if you're interested in delving deeper into this language. What we're going to try and do in this lesson is add a JavaScript animation or game, if you choose, or different features using JavaScript, and also add some JavaScript to the button so that it actually does something. And I think doing that will teach you some of the basics and the foundations of how to use JavaScript in a website. A couple of things that I'm just going to talk through before we do a demonstration. Now, as mentioned in the previous lesson, anything that you think you want to do, just remember that you can Google it. Someone has thought about it before, likely, and on Googling it, you will find an answer. One example was, for instance, opening something in a new tab, which was shown here. Now, like CSS, whenever you add JavaScript to a website, you add it in the script tags. So not the style tags, which are for CSS, but script tags, as you can see, as indicated by the red arrow. So it says script, and you've got a little bit of JavaScript, which says window.alert, and I'll show you that in a minute. It's just a little pop-up, which comes up with the number 11. And that is JavaScript. And the key thing to remember is that you put JavaScript in the script tags. One thing you might want to try and do is add what's called an on-click event. Now, what you can see here in the code is I have a button. In fact, I have two buttons. One is the login button and one is the sign up button, which you have on your nav bar, which you created hopefully in the previous lesson. Now, you're going to add this little bit of code there, which says on-click. And you're going to add a kind of ID, if you want to call it that, which says login function. And that's indicated there by the green arrow. If you go up to the top of the code, number three, with the purple arrow, you can see some JavaScript in script tags. And there I have a function called login function. And I've actually put in some code in that login function, just saying, could you pop up with some text saying login functionality is under development. Now. To put this really simply, all I've done is that I've called a login function. When you click the button, you call a login function, and that login function is written in JavaScript in between the script tags. I'll show you how that works, and hopefully it'll make more sense. Another thing we're going to look at is CodePen, and you might find hundreds of different things that you might want to implement or integrate into your site. I'm going to give you one example of a wonderful animation which is done in JavaScript that you can implement directly into your site. You can also add games. In fact, you could create your own games in JavaScript. If you've got good enough things like Hangman, you could pause the screen and have a look at the scripts here or look at the links and you can add your own games, embed them into your website. One quite important thing to consider before we start building a fully fledged website is version control. Now, version control just means when your website's starting to get complex, you have more than one page, you're editing it, you're making different bits of changes here, you're adding images, you're doing things which is constantly changing it. What if you did something that completely mucked it up and you wanted to get back to the previous working version? That is why you need version control. So version control, a really simple way of doing it, is simply by having a folder with 
one file, like a, say a web page or a folder called version one. If you made changes, you could make a backup or a copy of that folder, call it version two, version three, etc. And you keep working on the new version. So you have backups of the old versions. A professionally used site for version control is GitHub. And I would highly recommend that you went to github.com, simply sign up for an account, make a new repository, and you can make you can keep versions, keep track of everything that you're doing. Something I'll show you um, as we go on. So for now, we're going to try and recreate some JavaScript, and I'm going to do a quick demonstration so you can follow along with me. For JavaScript, one of the things that we might want to do is add some functionality to this button. If I refresh the page, we can see that I've actually removed the code now, and there's nothing there. So how do we do that? We do that by using some JavaScript. Now, in exactly the same way that you've been doing for CSS and for HTML, you can go onto W3Schools, click on JavaScript, and it gives you absolutely everything you could ever possibly need to do with JavaScript. So if you were looking for an output or how to do that, this is what I'm about to do, um, you would just look it up and it gives you the code. So this gives you the different types of alert boxes and outputs that you can have with JavaScript. You can also write functions, and this is what I'm going to demonstrate now. So if we go back to our code, we would like to add something to this button, this sign, uh, say the login function here. So when someone clicks on the button, we would like the button to say something. That's being interactive. So if we go down to the nav bar where the login button is, over here, I'm going to add an on click event and I'm going to call a login function and you'll see how this works in a minute. So I've done that and I'm saying, could you call over here? I'm saying, if someone clicks on this button, could you call a login function? So of course we need to write some JavaScript, which always goes in script tags and I'm going to write a login function. So every function in JavaScript just starts with the word function, login. You have these curly braces in which you write your actual message. And I'm going to make a really simple thing, which just says uh, login functionality is being coded, is being developed. Thank you for your patience or something like that. So if I now save that, and I go back, refresh, you can see that when I click on the login function, it says login functionality is being developed. Now remember, if you don't remember how to write that, you can just pause the screen and copy what I've done, or you can look it up. And as a beginner, you would be doing a lot of looking up. So this is the format or the syntax for a function. It's always a function, the name of your function, then you have these curly braces and you put what you want to happen in the function inside the curly braces. And again, the different types of output. One of them is uh, alert box, which is what I used. This is another example, you can see that, which is pretty much what I did, which is on click, do something. Except here, they're actually uh, using a document write, which is similar type of output, but they're doing it inside the on click event instead of calling a function, which is one step further. So lots to look at there. You can play around with that. And what I would suggest is once you've done it for one, you can simply cut and paste this. And why don't you try making another script for sign up? And of course, adding the same on click event over here in the sign up button. So another thing that you might want to do is add some JavaScript animation. And you can search in CodePen for anything you want. So for instance, if I typed in animated circles, it might come up with a whole bunch of options. Some of these will be just HTML, some will be HTML and CSS, and some will be with JavaScript included. So let's, you can pick any of these. I'll select that one. Um, the thing to do is you don't usually have to sign up, but if it asks you to, there's no harm in signing up and make sure you're in the editor view. So you can change it to details view, full page view, editor view. And what it does is it gives you some HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that you can integrate into your page. Now, make sure when you're using 
any of these that it's compiled so just click on this little arrow and if you see an option which says compile please make sure you compile the html or compile the gss but in this case it looks like it's been done for you so you copy and paste the the html and then we're going to put the javascript in a script tag so let's see how that's done we're going to open our page and that's how it looks so far and go back and open it in sublime text and i'm going to add my think about where on this page i would like to add the animation perhaps underneath here so underneath the cards scroll down there and just add a little comment which says oops javascript no, i'll just say animation and then paste in my body. Now, of course, if I save that and go back, you'll see that nothing's happened. It's got some weird stuff going on here, but nothing else. So, of course, I have to actually add the JavaScript. So I'm going to Control A that to select all and Control C, which copies it. And then somewhere here in the body, Can actually remove those body tags because it's in the body tag over here. I'm going to add some script tags into which I paste in that massive JavaScript. So you can see that's all there in between those JavaScript uh, tags. Go back and when you refresh the page you see that your animation is there and it's in a frame so you can play around with that. There's a width that I could change to some extent. And of course, you can style this ID as you wish and customize it. But for now, you have that animation. And that just really gives you an idea of what you can do. One last little tip. You can, of course, just Google JavaScript scripts and see what comes up. There's thousands of things on the internet which are going to allow you to use free javascript scripts or games or anything that you're looking for one such site is javascript kit.com and just to illustrate how it works you could for instance click on free javascripts click on games i could click on the love test and it gives you directions as to how you can add this JavaScript to your website. So for instance, this one says simply copy the code below. So you copy the whole thing, control A, control C, and put it in the body section of your page. And that's pretty much it. So this is all the JavaScript. You grab it, you put it in the body section. Now the body section just means that it has to be before the body, the closing body tag. So I'm gonna put it right at the bottom of our page there. And it's up. Just check to see that it actually has script tags already inbuilt, which means it should work. So I'm going to save that, go back to my website and see what it's done. And in fact, it has added this love test to my page where I could put in two random people. and it gives me a compatibility percentage. So again, this is just showing you the, the potential. You can grab existing JavaScript. As you get really good, you can write your own JavaScript, make your own games, and you can embed them. But JavaScript is really the language of the web. It's the language that makes websites interactive. So we've looked at adding on-click events using JavaScript and actually creating your own JavaScript function. We've looked at adding JavaScript animations as well as looking at games and additional scripts that you can add to your site from different anywhere actually on the internet if you just google it and at this point i'd like to talk a little bit more about version control now as your website is starting to get much more complex you have multiple pages which is something we're going to look at shortly what if you did something that mucked it all up and you wanted to return to the previous working version well, that is why you need version control. 
And version control, to put it really simply, is just making copies of your work and labeling it and tracking changes so that if you need to go back to a previous version, or if you need to refer back to maybe the first ever version that you made, you would be able to do so easily. Always make backups of your work and ideally label them by versions. For instance, you might call it version 1.1 or version 1.2. A professionally used version control system is GitHub, and you can go to it uh, just by going to www.github.com. And you might want to watch our specific GitHub series, which takes you through a professional and advanced use of GitHub using the terminal as well as just uploading files. But it is very easy to use if you're just uploading things simply. Sign up for an account and Create what's called a new repository or a repo, upload your code, and that's it. You simply keep uploading new versions and it tracks the changes, it keeps all your versions for you, and it's wonderful. So at this point, we have quite an interesting website. We've got some animations, we've got JavaScript, we've got our navbar, and if you could pause the screen, make sure that you've completed the following. Next lesson, we're going to be doing a few things which really finalize the site for us and bring it all together. So we're going to be making a logo. We're going to be looking at how to add multiple pages to your website. We have this, there are very few websites in the world which are just one single page with no links to anything else. We're going to look at ensuring a consistent house style, having a base template and putting it all together. This lesson's magical tip is why don't you check out GitHub, sign up for an account, but also use it, use the search bar on GitHub to search for any application that you might want. It could be an HTML application or a chatbot or an animation. And in just the same way that you were doing on CodePen, you'll find that GitHub has thousands and thousands of different applications that you can use, um, integrate. Often many of them are open source as well. So it's really exciting and definitely worth checking out. So see you in the next lesson.